inch back with some more beginning or entry level, a chance for someone to learn about the basics and the simplicity and the fun of painting in watercolor. So for this particular one, I'm going to use just three colors, one brush, a sheet of paper, a stapler, well, yeah, a stapler, and uh, leaves. So go outside and grab a couple of leaves of different size, small, medium, and large ones, and you're going to be amazed at how I'm going to make art out of those. So just some fun to be had. Now, we're going to think of a light, a medium, and a dark area in it. That's all you got to worry about. And with those three, I'm going to have a yellow. It's got a name called Permanent Yellow Lemon, fancy name, or Ultramarine Blue. You just want a yellow, a blue, and a very dark, almost black. Mine's called Royal Blue. Some kind of a tray, a porcelain dish, a butcher tray, a something in the kitchen. Don't tell. I won't tell. An area to mix the paint. A tall bucket with lots of water so that you can clean out the one brush. And as you see, it's a flat brush. We're going to cover a lot of territory quick, and that's the reason for that. Won't need the tissue. Oh, did you see the one on the tissue for the secret ingredient? I'm not going to tell. you got to go watch that other beginning one. As I said, some leaves, a piece of watercolor paper, some kind of a board. Now, that's called a gator board or an incredible board. Go get a piece of cardboard or two. Tape them together because I'm going to do some stapling. So, you've got a sheet of watercolor paper. And we're going to start by mixing a couple of different shades or tones, just a variety. So clean out your brush, and here's the way. I bring water, and I've already put some paint there, but I'm going to do it again so that you see every step because I want to talk to you or your friend or the little one as though they're a beginner. So I'm bringing some water over, and an important part of this is keep the colors clean. My grandkids know how to do this from the age of 2 to 14. See, so yeah. 14, they don't talk to us anymore. No, they do. I'm just kidding. So anyways, bring in some yellow over there and then mixing water with it because you want to mix the cup. You're not just taking paint right out of the area you squeezed in. And so what I did is I took paint that comes in a tube and squeezed it out. No, I'll show you. It's no big deal. So I just take and squeeze out about that much and set it right down and the lid back on. If the paint you had comes in a cube, it's dry, then just add some water. It's not important about what color, and even if you don't have yellow, use green or orange. I don't care. So I'm mixing up some yellow. Now I'm going to mix that yellow together with blue, and there's going to be some different shades of green. So I've got a yellow now, and I've got a green now, and I've got a blue now. Just clean out your brush and have a different part of the palette or the tray to mix color. So I have some nice clean colors. They're ready to go. Lots of water for the first layer not as much water for the second layer, and very little water for the third layer. Don't be worried. Three layers doesn't mean it's harder. It's really easy. So back to some water. <laughs> this is the fun part. Watch this. Come on over to the painting. Here's where I tell my students, you have to be very careful. Well, that's what I call very careful putting down paint. Just back and forth, coming back with your brush, and go back to the palette and pick up some extra color, maybe a little bit more blue this time, and uh, maybe a little more yellow. And so I'm leaving some spots white, and this is just pretend like you're painting an abstract. You have no idea what it is. The only concern is that you would like for this, there's a nice bright area of yellow. I'm going to reach across to you and pick up some paint and come over there, and I've got a so there's different shades, different tones. And all that means is this is a cleaner looking yellow, that's a little greener, and that's even more green, and that's bluer. So I think I'll, I'll even play with some more of that blue. But notice it's not very dark. So I want to keep it light and back and forth and up and down. And, and if you have a, you know, a big drip of water going in there, then that's the only time you need a Kleenex to pick it up so it doesn't run together. I want spots of these different colors. I don't want it all to mix in and blend together. So, But keep it what I call just an abstract so that you're kind of having a loose, simple version. And then a fun, <laughs> this really is going to be crazy, a fun little thing to do at the end is I'm going to put some paint, dissolve some paint, and I'm going to just do this. I'm going to just sprinkle color on the page. I want just a nice, random, colorful, creative look of what's going on. And so I'm sprinkling yellow, and if you didn't like the yellow on that spot, you just blot it up and so forth. 
And so this will give a little bit of texture. That's a little secret thing by having some of these spots of paint mixing in with what's there. And so you'll end up with some texture. Now, <laughs> don't wear white when you do this because you're going to get the splatters on you and I'm going to be the one getting in trouble. Grab a hair dryer. And now we're going to dry it because we're going to go to three stages. But I'll let you see a little up close before I dry it. So come on in, take a look at this up close before I hit it with the hair dryer. And notice there's still spots of white. And if you don't like it that way, you turn it this way and you could turn it that way. It's all about some clean color and a big variety of color and then the hair dryer. All right, once before we start painting, once again, you want to check and make sure this is dry. And I use the back of the hand technique or my arm if I'm on short sleeves. If, it does, if you feel a cool or cool or cold, no, oh, it feels even. So that tells you then we're okay because you really want it to be dry. And the reason for that in watercolor, that if it's still least bit wet, it's going to blend together and muck it up and get a little dirty and don't do that. So now you've been waiting, you've been wondering about these, haven't you? I bet. What am I going to do with these? Well, these are going to become my stencil. So I'm going to start laying these down. I'm going to get this little angle off the way there so I don't break that board. And so I'm going to take and open up the stapler and I'm going to find an interesting. Now, what's interesting? Interesting is I'm going to find a spot that this is going to cover up that isn't plain, that isn't even. It might have some speckles, it might have a piece of white spot or a yellow here and a blue there. So that's the part that I want to save is a part that isn't even. Because even, look at the shirt. You see any even? That's what you don't want even underneath this. So I have a little spot of white. So it's not about necessarily you seeing exactly. It's about that that area. Oh, didn't know the click works so good. So then I'll, I'll use different sizes. Sometimes they'll touch and sometimes they'll, you know, they'll be apart. And so I look at and I'll share with you uh, what I'm doing. And so I'll see a little bit of a white. Oh, I like this over here. Look at that little yellow, some white spot and some green. And so I find that little area. And so that's what I'm going to do is I want to save. See underneath it. Now over here, it's all even. So I don't want to save that part. I want to save this kind of colorful yellow, kind of green and kind of white. That's some of what I'm saying. Those are the interesting areas. Now you can lay uh, the leaves down and then staple them later or do them one at a time. Don't do too many staples. Just, you know, one or two in the center to hold it in place. Kind of a grouping, some going left and some going right and some up and over and leaning and zigging and zagging. So I'm going to put three to together here fancy stapler. Not used to such good things, but we're at Art Academy Live and so we got the best for you. So decide if you want to cover less than half of what you painted or more than half of what you painted. So it's not about half left untouched and I'm going to leave, I'm going to cover up more of what I have initially painted because I like how it started out. I'll have a more light color saved is what's happening. And so a few here, let's find a little one all by itself. A little spot for a lonely little one. Where do I want it? Uh, over there. Abstract. It's like watching those home decorating shows. You're just kind of rearranging it. A little here, a little there, and a couple little accents. And so two more big ones, and I am going to stop. Got it. Okay, I'm going to stop even there. So let you see, it's attached to the board, let you see what's going on. And I have covered up mostly uh, the first part of what I painted, the lighter value. And now we're going to do a darker value. Remember, you're a beginner, so I'm going to explain lighter and darker. So to make it lighter, you add lots of water. To make it darker, you either take away the water or put extra paint. So I'm going to clean out my brush. And before I brought over, sometimes I even squeeze water, I'm going to bring over a little bit of water and I'm going to go into the darker color first, that darker blue and mix some color, turn the brush over and mix some color and just a little bit of that. Now over on this side of the palette, I'm going to show you, that's just a big heavy wet puddle. Don't touch it. In fact, I'll put a sponge over there because I want to make this next layer darker. Maybe two layers is all it needs. And so I have that extra very dark color in case we go to a third layer. 
And if you have green, you can use green, but I want to make it simple, just a little bit of yellow. Okay, I've got the paint ready to go. I'm going to move over to the painting, and here's where I'm going to use that shield or use those leaves as a stencil. So now I'm going to cover everything around and carefully. I don't want paint to go underneath, so I'm just pushing the leaf down with one hand. I'll use a, an extra brush there so that you can see what's going on. Push that leaf down with another brush, and I'm just painting from the leaf across the watercolor paper. I'm going to cover up some of that area. And then go back to the palette, pick up some more paint, not too wet of a value, maybe a little more blue this time. So I'm changing the colors. So I'm going to cover up everything, yes, everything, using the leaf as a stencil. And so this end result painting is going to look like you're looking at all the leaves that fell on the ground in the forest. So covering around, whether you put your hand there, I did an extra brush so that you could see, and not too wet so that paint doesn't go inside or, or underneath. So all the way around and nice and careful. Take your time. There's no hurry. And so that's what this next step is, is to give a good variety of color, even in here. Careful, careful, careful. I'd rather not put too many staples, just take my time with doing it this way. Holding the leaf, you know, the leaf is curled a little bit, so I'm holding it down with an extra brush. I'd use my hand, but you can't see what I'm doing. So an extra brush there. And so now you can see that it's getting darker. Don't worry about trying to paint around those stems. We'll add a few stems later on when we're all done. So now when we pull these leaves off, you'll have a nice light value underneath and an interesting shape and an exciting artistic look. So you're not trying to paint leaves. You're painting colorful patterns with value change. All the way around, all the way around. Hold that leaf down. And I'm not having such a juicy wet puddle as it was that I started with. And if it doesn't perfectly cover, over here I'm going to go a little lighter value. That meant, meant more water, a little more yellow. That's why it's coming off a little greener. Cover up that yellow. So if you don't cover up this yellow, it's going to look like another leaf. So that's why I cover all that paint, cover all that first area, but and let the leaves act as a stencil. And what you can do another time is you can create your own stencil shape or find other elements in nature to use as a stencil shape. All right, so I've got color. I'm going to hold it up a second for you to see. Or you can't see, but you can't see what's behind. You can't see what's going on, but I'll give you a little peek underneath there because when we peel that away, here's a little preview of what's going to happen. You'll have some very interesting leaves. So next thing, once again, I'm going to set it down. I'm going to grab the hair dryer and dry it. We might just do a couple of darks. So three stages. Wait till you see the next one. Let me dry it for now. Okay, once again, I tested with the back of my hand. You want to be careful here because this makes it pretty warm, so make sure you're spending long enough to, pretty sure it's dry there, pretty sure it's dry there. So spend that extra time making sure it's dry. And then just a couple more leaves for a few more accents. So once again, a couple of leaves. Now this is going to cover some of the area we made slightly darker, like a section over here. You can see that is darker. Want to peek? Okay, darker than that. So that, but I want to save that. And so I'm going to use that stencil again and the stapler, maybe a spot over here up in the top and a spot over here in the middle. So I'm saving a few more spots, whether it be two or three. Guess I'm going to have four because I have four leaves. Didn't know how many more I had. Oh, we got one, two, three over there. Let's do another one. Anywhere is fine. I'm just trying to have some artistic decision here. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And one little one there. And now it's even darker. So grab our brush over in the palette. And if you see a big puddle of water, take it away, swirl it away, clean out your brush. And we're going to just use that dark, dark, almost black color with not much water and the blue, the dark blue color. 
and we'll put and use that stencil to make even another layer even darker. So go across, and here you don't have to do it everywhere if you don't want to, just a few areas. Pick out a few spots. I like this, maybe the upper left hand corner, I'll make it even darker. So there's no, you could have stopped. Hey, wait, you could have just done the two layers. It's going to still work out well. Nothing wrong with three layers. I just like the contrast that that really dark layer makes. So now I'm using the paint and take your time, carefully go around. A couple of darks on the inside. And so not too much water makes it darker or a lot of paint. And so, and here's where you want to take your time and nice and neat when you're coming up and touching along the edge of the, of the leaf and not too wet so it doesn't sneak into where the staple is and take away. A few spots there, a spot or two here darker. And so just a few areas. I think I did one over on that side. I'll add that slightly darker here. So you can go everywhere with it darker. You don't have to. There's like no right and no wrong. It's a matter of having some fun. This pattern is, this, is the right part. That's the interesting part. You could, if you wanted to, take some of that dark color and just paint a few lines or stems. Take a look up close and you can see what I'm doing here. Just taking the, you know, the brush and I'm drawing some lines. Maybe those are added stems. There's another stem here. And so I'm just painting lines up and down as though there's something going on. So you can just make some brush strokes, some thick and thin ones. You don't have to have a round brush. Some of those looks like stems coming down at the bottom down here, not so hard. Now, once again, for the last time, let's hit it with the hairdryer and wait till you see what happens when we pull the leaves off. I'm just testing while I'm drying, just to, you know, look underneath and make sure a couple of spots. Sometimes, you know, water's hiding or paint's hiding under a leaf. Oh, sorry about that, you can't hear me. I'm testing underneath the leaf in case some paint is underneath there and it didn't dry, the, the leaf was shielding it. And now, time to pop off the leaves. So this is a palette knife and you can get a, you know, a household knife. And here is the, that's it, we're done. Here's the magic. We're gonna take away the leaves and show our stencil shape and just have art not always has to have a, a house and a sky and trees. It can just be some fun patterns. And so moving away those, that's where it's important that it be dry so I don't smear anything. And here I can create a pattern, create a, a mat on top of that and have some fun. You could come back and, you know, draw on it or paint on it if you wanted to. You know, here's a pencil. It's a, called a watercolor pencil. And if I wanted to have the rest of that particular leaf, I think the most important thing to have as a finishing touch is to say to mom. And I guarantee you, you're going to get an attaboy with one of these. I hope you had fun with a beginner's class in watercolor painting and have some fun with just patterns, color, and contrast. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Lynch. Bye for now. Set it right down and the lid back on. If the paint you had comes in a cube, it's dry, then just add some water. It's not important about what color, and even if you don't have yellow, use green or orange. I don't care. So I'm mixing up some yellow. Now I'm going to mix that yellow together with blue, and there's going to be some different shades of green. So I've got a yellow now, and I've got a green now, and I've got a blue now. Just clean out your brush and have a different part of the palette or the tray to mix color. So I have some nice clean colors. They're ready to go. Lots of water for the first layer, not as much water for the second layer, and very little water for the Lynch back with some more beginning or entry level, a chance for someone to learn about the basics and the simplicity and the fun of painting in watercolor. So for this particular one, I'm going to use just three colors, one brush, 
a sheet of paper, a stapler, well, yeah, a stapler, and uh, leaves. So go outside and grab a couple of leaves of diff there, but I'm gonna do it again so that you see every step because I wanna talk to you or your friend or the little one as though they're a beginner. So I'm bringing some water over and an important part of this is keep the colors clean. My grandkids know how to do this from the age of two to 14. See, at 14, they don't talk to us anymore. No, they do, I'm just kidding. So anyways, bring in some yellow over there and then mixing water with it, because you wanna mix the color. You're not just taking paint right out of the area you squeezed in, and so what I did is I took paint that comes in a tube and squeezed it out. No, I'll show you, it's no big deal. So I just take and squeeze out about that much and, and clean out the one brush, and as you see, it's a flat brush. We're gonna cover a lot of territory quick, and that's the reason for that. Won't need the tissue. Oh, did you see the one on the tissue for the secret ingredient? I'm not gonna tell. You gotta go watch that other beginning one. As I said, some leaves, a piece of watercolor paper, some kind of a board. Now that's called a gator board or an incredible board. Go get a piece of cardboard or two. Tape them together because I'm gonna do some stapling. So, you've got a sheet of watercolor paper. And we're gonna start by mixing a couple of different shades or tones, just a variety. So clean out your brush and here's the way. I bring water and I've already put some paint different size, small, medium, and large ones. And you're gonna be amazed at how I'm gonna make art out of those. So just some fun to be had. Now, we're gonna think of a light, a medium, and a dark area in it. That's all you gotta worry about. And with those three, I'm gonna have a yellow. It's got a name called Permanent Yellow Lemon, fancy name, or Ultramarine Blue. You just want a yellow, a blue, and a very dark, almost black. Mine's called Royal Blue. Some kind of a tray, a porcelain dish, a butcher tray, a something in the kitchen, don't tell, I won't tell. An area to mix the paint. A tall bucket with lots of water so that you can